we made it to the final video. Let's do some more test cuts and then let's take a look at the file prep and let's look at the final specs of the machine and see if we achieved our goals. Let's go. Okay, let's do some more test cuts. I've got some eight millimeter carbon steel in here. This is towards the top end of what this 1000 watt laser source should be able to cut. I've set up a 20 millimeter circle and I put in some initial parameters. Let's give it a try and see what happens. All right, we cut it first go around. Let me get that part out and see how it looks. Okay, well, right off the go, first try, this already looks better than any result I ever got off of my old machine. There were my old tests from the other machine, and here was the new test. Looks like I could dial back my pierce a little bit, punched a huge hole through there. <laughs> I took the plate out so we could take a closer look at the underside. There's no slag on the cut, except right there around the pierce. Um, looks like I could, well, I need to dial that back a little bit. That's a huge hole and maybe move it off the material a little bit. Looks like it slightly marred up that side there where, where the pierce interfered with the cut. But yeah, that's, um, that's pretty clean. I don't even think I'm gonna mess with the settings anymore. Um, that's gonna be good enough for anything I wanna do with it. Here's the cutout piece. That's the top, the bottom. It's a little marred up here where my pierce was too close, but that can easily be fixed. So cool. I might even be able to get it a little cleaner if I fine tune some of the parameters, but for now that looks pretty good to me. All right, let's do another test cut. I've got some thin 24 gauge aluminum in there. It's about the thinnest material I could find on hand. And I've dropped in my logo, just like we started out on the old machine. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Also, I'm cutting this out with nitrogen this time instead of oxygen. And I've switched over to a single nozzle instead of double. Let's have a look here. Here's my original one. I cut off my old machine out of galvanized steel. And here's the new one we cut out with aluminum. And you can see it did pretty well. Those those lines are just way too thin and it was just it started to fall apart. It, it happened on this one too, you can see. It held up a little bit better, but um, I think I need to scale that up a little bit uh, so it doesn't just break. Let's try it one more time. There we go. I scaled it up 200% and it stayed together this time. All right, let's uh, pull it off there and see what it looks like on the bottom side. Okay, that's the front. That's the back. There's really almost no discernible difference. There's some slight little burrs here that just kind of wipe off with my finger. But anyway, cool. Let me show you what I'm doing for file prep. First, we need to make some files in Fusion. Exporting the files from Fusion is really simple. You just create a sketch on your object and then save it. And then go down and select the sketch. And then right click and save it as a DXF file. Once we have all the DXF files prepped, then we can import them into the RayTools 2D Cutahead software. I'll open up a couple of them here. Then I'm gonna add some lead lines. The lead lines allow you to start the cut off of the shape. That way uh, when you do the pierce, it doesn't mar up the material. If I zoom in here, you can see the lead lines, though those little white lines, that's where it's gonna start the cut before it enters the actual shape. Next, I want to make sure I'm happy with the order of the cuts, so I'll select the perimeter lines, then click this arrow button up here to send them to the last of the order, 
You can see the numbers here. They show the order that the cuts are going to be performed in. I want to make sure I cut out all the holes first because once I cut out the perimeter, uh, the sheet could drop or move slightly. Then I need to set up the cutting parameters for the Pearson cut, the power, the gas pressure, the speed, etc., which I've already done from my last piece. And that's it. Now I just need to jog the laser head over to the upper left hand corner of my material and mark the start point. Open the shutter and enable the laser source and hit start. Let me talk about things I might change about this design after having built it. Um, I already mentioned, um, I kind of wish I would have used black aluminum extrusion for this uh, to go with the black panels on the front. I think that could have look, looked way cooler along with black hardware to match. Also, my uh, roof system was quite complicated. Um, you know, I'm limited by the beams in my workshop, but you know, if you have larger ceilings, I'd probably just increase the height a few inches and not have to deal with this opening up here. On the back side, you know, I routed my gas connections right through the door here. Probably makes more sense to route them out through either side of the machine instead, that way you can still open the door while the gas line's hooked up. It's not a big deal, but you know, it could add an extra level of convenience. I got a lot of great feedback while I was doing the electronics and you know I learned I could have wired my e-stop through the STO function of the servo drives and simply eliminated this whole bank of contactors and I also learned that I don't even really need one for each servo drive I could have just had one that uh, ran through all of them so you know there's a couple ways you could save some cost and I still want to update the cutting bed these aluminum rails were just my temporary off-the-shelf solution to get me going um, but yeah, I'll uh, set up a file and buy some material and cut out some proper serrated knives for this so I don't have to worry about cutting over them. I wanted to take a minute to look back at how this project started and where we ultimately ended up. For the cost, my goal was to try to build this new machine for 10 k and I came close but ended up about $500 over budget. That's still a huge improvement over the 15 k it took to build my first machine. I put an asterisk here as my machine as shown would cost a bit more. You know the perks of doing this on YouTube is that Leadshine sponsored some much nicer servo motors than I was originally going to use. There are cheaper alternatives with the same specs but without all the fancy features. And instead of machining my own aluminum parts and just accounting for the material cost, PCBWay sponsored them for me and saved me tons of machining time. So if you want to use these same products and services, it will increase the overall cost of the machine. For the cutting area, I aim for 31.5 by 26 inches. I got close but fell a little short after adding in a small buffer zone around the perimeter and accounting for homing switches and their pull-off distance. I also failed to consider the extra width of the capacitive sensor on the laser head. In the end, I still gained about 3 to 4 inches of usable cutting area on each axis, which is nice. And being able to drop in a 2 by 3 foot sheet of material makes it much more convenient for me since I have to order small quantities of sheet stock online. For the max speed, I did hit the target of 60 meters a minute with the new belt drive system, and that's on par with some of the commercially available machines. I was unsure how well this was going to work when I was back in the design phase, but now seeing it in action, I'm really glad I went with this approach. I think the belts work great in this small form factor application. Overall, I think we did pretty well. We got more cutting area out of roughly the same footprint. We got faster rapids. It was easier to enclose. The door panels make it easier to retrieve parts. It's more compact with a drag chain on the interior and having the motors oriented downwards and it was way cheaper to build. It's also very easy to assemble if you don't mind working with hundreds of angle brackets and T-nuts. <laughs> and hopefully it'll be easy for anyone wanting to try to replicate this machine with a full 3D model and bill of materials available and having the option to order the custom parts through PCB way. If you wanna build your own machine, please consider joining my Patreon at DIY Fiber Laser. I only ask for $14 a month and I'm offering much in return. I've spent a lot of time preparing supporting files and documentation for the project, including a complete bill of materials, servo motor wiring diagram, a laser source wiring diagram, a gas control system diagram, a full 3D model of the machine, all 3D printed part files, my extrusion cut and drill list and fastener sizes, all laser cut part DXF files, my cutting parameters that I've tested so far and I'll continue to update them as I cut more and product user manuals. Stick around for a few months while you build your machine and we have a private discourse forum where I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have during the project. 
Seriously, where are you going to get tech support for $14 a month? If you want to build your machine, I'm here to help. Also, as you know, PCBWay machined all of my custom aluminum parts for the build. So I've set up a project on their website. If you want the convenience of having these machined for you, simply add them to your cart and select the quantity. And I'll leave the link below in the description. Okay, I think that pretty much wraps up this series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned, there's a lot more coming in the near future. I've already started designing and planning for my next project, which is going to be a dedicated fiber laser tube cutting machine, which should be a fun and challenging project. I'm getting a 4-in-1 laser welder from Skyfire, um, so we'll take a look at its features and test it out. And then uh, eventually, once I also have the tube cutting machine done, uh, we'll use all, all three machines together and try to do some fabrication. Also, in October, I'm traveling to China for the first time uh, to visit Skyfire for a week. So I'm really excited about that trip. Um, hopefully I'll be able to record lots of footage and you know come back home and share the adventure with you guys. I'm gonna thank everybody who chimed in and offered your support and feedback during this series. Uh, you guys are awesome. I also wanna thank the three big sponsors that helped me out with this project, uh, Skyfire, Leadshine, and PCB Way. And also thank you to all my Patreons for making all this possible. Thank you guys, you're awesome.